and on behalf of the Awareness Foundation, I am delighted this evening to welcome uh, the Reverend Dr. Nadim Nassar, who, uh, who is uh, going to speak to us this evening. He uh, was uh, born in Syria and was educated in Beirut, and he was ordained in 2004 by the Bishop of London. He uh, is heavily involved in advising a wide range of um, governmental, political uh, uh, groups on, uh, on religion. Um, and, um, and he preaches at uh, uh, a number of London churches. And I have the great pleasure of listening to him at my own church, St. Mary Magdalene in Wandsworth. And uh, if you ask him, uh, as many people do, because he comes from Syria, uh, when, when did you become a Christian? He will, um, he will destroy your assumptions by saying that he has never been anything else. And this evening, I'm absolutely certain he's going to destroy many of our other assumptions when he talks to us about, uh, I am the resurrection of the life. And just to kick it off, uh, off uh, I am now going to read verses 7 to 27 of chapter 11 of John's Gospel. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, there are not 12 hours in the day. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Thank you very much, Tom, and uh, welcome everybody <clears throat> uh, to this last session of our um, Awareness Live Lent uh, program 2022. And the last session is about I am the resurrection and the life that Jesus shocked everybody by this incredible statement. Uh, first of all, we need to understand that the, the, um, some scholars divide the gospel according to John into two parts or two books, if you like. The first book <clears throat> is uh, chapters from one to 12 and they call it <clears throat> the book of signs. The book of signs 
means sign, according to the, to the theology of St. John, is what we call in other contexts, miracles. But John specifically doesn't call those events that Jesus performed miracles. He calls them signs. A sign is because he calls it calls them signs because they point at something beyond themselves, something beyond being just a miracle, something uh, a breaking the laws of, of physics or, or the laws of logic or the laws of uh, the, the, the culture that we, we live in or the laws of our senses. So this is a sign for John. The chapters from 13 to 21, <clears throat> the scholars called it the book of glory. And this is a beautiful description of half of the gospel according to John, the gospel of glory or the book of glory. So we have the book of signs and the book of glory. And this incredible event of, of the raising of uh, uh, Lazarus is just before it happened in chapter 11 just before the passion. And when John turns into almost a historian, um, he leaves all the theology, all the transcendence, all the um, uh, amazing philosophical, theological, transcendental language to tell us what happened during the passion. Um, and he has his own perspective on the passion. This is what, what we're not talking about today. So, but this is a very significant sign uh, John tells us about because this is exactly before, immediately before, he goes into the passion, into the way, direct road to the cross. The sayings of I am, or Ego eimi in, in, in uh, Greek, um, the I am's of, of, of Jesus have mostly links with signs. For example, um, we, we, we remember the, the, the feeding of the, the 5,000s. Uh, um, John tells us in chapter six, the, the feeding the, the, the 5,000, it is a sign because, because um, uh, John looks beyond the immediate miracle to be a sign that when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So the link here is extremely clear. Um, feeding the 5,000, the revelation of Jesus about himself the bread of life, which has a lot of consequences. Also, <clears throat> in uh, chapter eight and nine, chapter eight, Jesus um, declares that he is the light of the world. But that declaration is linked to the healing of the blind in chapter nine. And and uh, uh, spitting and making a clay and and healing healing the blind, and in that we see a huge presence of the concept of light, because Jesus does not do miracles for the sake of showing off. Jesus uh, made or did signs in order to point at something deeper and more existential and more to do with the culture, what I say, the culture of God, the culture of the inner God, the inner Trinity, and the relationship between himself and God, and therefore the relationship between us as human beings with God. So, uh,
Jesus said, well, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Light of life. And again, in, ch in chapter 9, he says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So uh, now, again, jo uh, John links the, the I am, I am the resurrection and the life with another sign, which is the raising of Lazarus um, in chapter 11. Uh, the heart of this, the heart of this sign, of this event, um, is the glory of God. And glory, it is very important for us to understand the word glory. What does glory mean? We always um, say for the glory of God. We do this for the glory of God. The glory of God shone around them. What is what? What does the word glory mean? In 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 uh, in Greek, glory means doxa, and doxa means the presence of God. So uh, the the whole the whole uh, or, or the the whole issue of the whole matter. The, the heart of the matter, of the sign of raising Lazarus, is the glory of God, is the presence of God. Uh, Jesus' first words are, this illness is not unto death, he says. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by means of it. So it, it, we're talking about it's not about it's not about the death itself. It's not about performing something spectacular. It is about the presence of God in Christ first. The presence of God in Christ. So um, the, the 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 glory of God, the presence of God, is the climax, if you like. Uh, of the chapter, the whole chapter 11. He also says to Martha, remember, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God, you would see the presence of God, you would see God is here. Uh, this is, um, this is very important, very important, because we believe that Jesus Christ is the incarnate, the incarnation of, of God. Because of that, this full presence of God in Christ makes Christ the glory of God, the presence, the full presence of God, and makes him the agent, the agent of life the giver of life. But what kind of life? Ah, here we come to I am the resurrection and the life. It is ultimately, we're talking about the eternal life, which we call salvation, is the eternal life. What kind of eternal life? And why, why did he raise Lazarus? Um... If you take that out of the, the sign, as I said, it the whole event becomes only a spectacular event. Everybody will be shocked and, and mesmerized and, and fascinated. That's it. But Jesus doesn't didn't want to fascinate anybody. The glory of God revealed both raising of Lazarus, that Jesus is the Lord of life, and also the claim that he is the resurrection and the life. So the claim was manifested 
was fulfilled in this loud cry of Jesus, Lazarus, come out. And it, it told us that it is the, um, it is from God the Father. It's from the presence of God in him. Um, but before we, we enter into deeper into the, 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 the theology of it, don't you see that it is very strange that Jesus would, would, would be delayed and he knew, they told him, your friend Lazarus is ill. And he squandered the time, frankly, and he delayed himself. And he was late. Well, come on, Jesus. Your best friend, your beloved friend, is ill and is going to die. How can we understand? How can we understand um, this delay of Jesus while when he knew that, that Lazarus was ill? The delay, it's, it's very significant. We, a lot of times, we feel that God did not answer our prayers or God was late in answering or we, we sometimes we want to scream in, in, to God, you're too late. Sorry, I wanted that last year, not now. Why are you late? So we, we, we have all, we all have this urge to blame God or to, to, to um, pick a bone with, with God and say, why are you delayed? And, and that's what Martha said loud and clear. If you were here, my brother would not have died. Well, that, that this delay, we need to understand because otherwise Jesus looks like unloving friend or didn't care really, or he wanted this spectacular event. So why, why was he late? Huh. That takes us to two gospels other than John. That takes us to Matthew 25. Do you remember what, what, what we have in Matthew 25? The wise virgins and the foolish virgins. What happened to the foolish virgins? They waited for the, gro the, 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 the groom and the groom was delayed and the oil ran out. The delay of the, of the groom, the delay of God, the delay of the master is not a new concept in the gospel. And it's not only in, the, in this event or this sign that Jesus uh, performed or made. We, we see it also in Luke, Luke 12, 35 to 37. Um, it said, Get dressed for service and keep your lamps burning. Be like people waiting for their master to come back from the wedding celebration. So, the, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. Blessed are those slaves whom their master finds alert when he returns. So we have the, the, the wise and the foolish virgins, and we have the masters and the slaves in, 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 in Luke. What, what is it? It is, in, this is the delay that Jesus is talking about. The delay with a purpose. When God is not uh, um, answering our prayers timely, 
in the time frame that we want, it doesn't mean that God doesn't care. So Martha had a bone to pick with, with, with uh, Jesus. It, she, she said to him with love and friendship, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. But you didn't come. It's too late. He's dead. Four, four days ago. And then for, for, for Martha, there, are, there were two options for Lazarus. One option is already gone. And that option was, if Jesus was, if Jesus had arrived earlier, Jesus could have prevented Lazarus from dying. Okay? That's option one. Option two, he will rise with everybody else at the end. Which was a, a normal, a common belief at that time. So Jesus told her, wait, there is a third option. A third option is in me. Do you believe in me? Forget about I am late. Forget about if I was here, I could have healed him. Forget about the, the, uh, the end of time uh, 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 resurrection. Look at me. I am the resurrection. Not I give, I perform. This is a paradox, my friends. He doesn't say I am, I am, I, I perform, I, I act, I bring resurrection, whatever. I am the resurrection. He puts himself a synonym, interchangeable synonym with the, res the word resurrection and life and life. So, do you believe that? And when Martha declares her faith, he performed, he brought back Lazarus from the dead. Not in, 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 in the sense of the last resurrection that, that um, Lazarus would never die again. No, but he brought him back to say, I am the Lord of life. I am the giver of life. I am the life. But then when he says, I am the resurrection, it, which is the not yet. Why? Because he was pointing at his own resurrection. His own passion that is coming very, very close. He had to face the cross. He had to go through dying for us. He paid for this claim. This claim, I am the resurrection and the life. He couldn't get away with it. He paid for it his life. He hung on the cross to, to, to say, I am my word. So he said it, he claimed it, and he fulfilled it. This is, this is, the, this is the, the, the amazing thing. So this delay revealed to Martha what Martha never ever could have ever imagined. And Martha would have never thought of this kind of incredible revelation of Christ to be the resurrection and the life. And immediately says, I am the life and I give it to Lazarus. Well, poor Lazarus, he had to die twice. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Jesus was preparing also us and preparing himself to set his, his, his face toward Jerusalem and face what will make him the Lord of life, will make him the glory of God, will make him the, the resurrection. So in the Easter Sunday, we wait 
we wait. It's all, it's, with God, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a game of time. The more we are patient with God, the more we open our lives with God, the more we explore the glory, the presence of God, the weight of God in our lives. And the more we want something like our, our culture, digital culture, immediate, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the more we miss this maturity of God being in our lives. Between the cross and the resurrection, we waited. We waited for the darkness to, to, to cover humanity, cover humanity, the weight of darkness. Look, there are pearls in this text, pearls. When Jesus wept, this is incredible. Jesus wept not because he was grieving, grieving about, about uh, Lazarus as we grieve when we, when we lose somebody. No. He was grieving about all humanity. He was saying, I understand now the impact of death as a human being. This is the, the human divine perspective in Jesus. Death is not fair. We are not created for death. He wept because he felt the heavy weight of this unnatural phenomenon in our lives. And therefore, when he wept, he felt the grief, the, 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 the pressure of the grief. And, 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 he, and John used incredible language. I want to, to read it to you. Which, uh, Um, which I love the, the, uh, the, the verse. He, this is, this is the verse, verse uh, um, 25. He who believes in me, listen carefully, the paradox. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Though he die, we are going to die like Lazarus, but we live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. So life is him and in him and with him. He is the, the, the embodiment of life. So... Uh, uh, this is, this is the power of, of, uh, uh, of Jesus. This is the power of the glory of God in Christ. And even that, on the cross, remember, Jesus felt the abandonment of God. He was delayed. God was delayed even on Jesus with Jesus. Jesus didn't want to die. On the cross, he was waiting for something. But after, after he died, I, I, I imagine Jesus saying to God, you left me to die. It's too late. I died. But then when we think we have reached bottom for, for, for God, that, that tragedy of the bottom, in the glory of God, in the presence of God, that could turn to be the most magnificent event in our lives. If we wait to, to, to feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, well, Tom, just two minutes. <laughs> uh, and... and when he said that, 
I am the resurrection and the life. And, and before he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So life, he, he valued life. Jesus valued life. Because of that, sometimes we appear as Christians. Like we, we glorify death, especially the cross. We glorify the cross. No. Jesus valued life. Because of that, he said more than once, I am the life. So we are the children of life. We are the, the, the followers of life. We are in, 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 uh, rooted in life, not in death. Sometimes I want to, to, to put the, the cross and with the cross is an explosion of life. To say this is out of the cross came. It's not the darkness and the and the uh, the, the, the the groom and the uh, all the the uh, sadness and grief and 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 Good Friday. Good Friday was necessary. That Jesus hit rock bottom in order for the dawn, the dawn of Easter would shatter that and, and fill our lives with, with, with light so that even death, even death would not be the end, would not be, would not have the power over us because we are the children of life. Um, he says, uh, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night comes when no one can work. Well, when he died, that's it. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And after the resurrection, he is always in the world and he is always the light of the world. This claim changed the history of humanity, the direction of humanity. This claim, I am the resurrection and the life, the glory of God in human being, the presence of God, the weight of God in humanity, redirected our history, redirected our existence. And therefore, we rejoice. And therefore, we are, we are the children of joy, the children of life, the children of the resurrection, and the children in this case. And here we come to the end. Eternal life. Eternal, it, it, it doesn't mean it has very, 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 very little to do with time. The, 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 the little bit of time of relationship with time is it's beyond time but the rest of it is eternal it means quality it means presence it means being with christ being with god and therefore i am the resurrection and the life it is the fulfillment of all the i ams before I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the vine. I am the truth. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. All the I ams came into climax to say, Jesus to say to the world, Easter Sunday, in the morning, you are a new creation. Because what made me weep in the death of Lazarus will make you cry out of joy at Easter because I going to go through the bitterness of death that, G that Lazarus tasted on the cross and that would be the end for it, for humanity.
Tom. Nadine, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you so much. And what a lot to think about. And I and very, very challenging. I I um I mean I hope that we are going to um to get a few questions for you now over the uh the next um 25, 20, 25 minutes or so, but I thought perhaps I'd kick it off. In in this particular passage, um it seems that Martha is um she she obviously she obviously gets the concept of resurrection in the last day, which I think comes from Leviticus or somewhere, uh, um, and um, but you know I wonder. But I mean, what she says to he says, "I am the resurrection of the life. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die." Do you believe this? And she says, "Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world." Doesn't doesn't that indicate that she slightly missed the point? Yes. And in fact. In fairness to her, I mean, I sort of feel we're rather like her, that, that, that our ability to slightly miss the point is pretty good. And um, Slightly? Uh, we would uh, have missed the uh, point completely. <laughs> in fairness to her, she really couldn't, she actually couldn't have properly understood him until after the cross, really, could she? After the resurrection? Uh, well, uh, well, okay, yeah. After the resurrection, she would say, Huh? The penny dropped. Now, oh, I see what he said. But at that time, she said, yes, Lord. But she didn't know really the depth of what she said. Yes, Lord. But I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because they, they, they understood, the, they understood the, the concept of resurrection yes. in the last day. They understood the concept of substitution. For, for sins so, so you can kind of you can get the crucifixion piece but then a lot of people find the resurrection piece very difficult to accept don't they yes because because um especially if we talk about that jesus rose in in the body and in uh in the spirit and in, as a whole that makes it even more difficult for many people even christians to 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 accept it i, I remember we all uh, know the uh, uh bishop jenkins when he said we don't juggle with bones um when he was asked uh, about the, the resurrection i i i wanted to say to to the bishop we do juggle with bones very much so, because, because if Jesus was not ra raised or was not risen in the body, in the body, then we are, we have not left the Greek mythology and the Greek philosophy that matter is evil and, and the, the spirit is good and everything material is is evil if that is was the case well what is the value of the incarnation don't we don't we believe that when god touched our humanity uh, um, sanctified our body also so the the the, the resurrection that Jesus rose in the body is the heart of our faith, is the heart. Other, other than that, the whole Christian faith, faith collapses or it becomes like a, like a school of philo philosophy and, and some kind of spiritual, uh, spiritual guru. Jesus becomes a spiritual guru. But actually, we are all sanctified. We are all redeemed on the cross. Well, tell me something. If we raise, if we, if we, if we, we are, we, we, we rise with, with Christ in spirit only. Why was the drama of the cross? Martha knew. Martha knew. They believed in the resurrection before the cross. 
Why was the, 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 the drama and the, the bloodshed of the cross and the whole tragedy of, of, of the cross if, if at the end everything is spiritual? What's the, what's the, what's the, the whole fuss about? The fuss about is about humanity as humanity with body, mind, soul, spirit, consciousness, everything. This is what I believe. So we have a question from Aaron and Karen. Pract whoops, wait a minute. Sorry, I just lost it. Here we go. Practically speaking, how should we as human beings understand, interpret internal life or sal et eternal life or salvation? Again, again, please. Practically speaking, practically speaking, mm -hmm. how should we as human beings understand, oblique stroke interpret, eternal life or salvation? We interpret it as an, an um, as a state of being that starts now. It doesn't start after after we die. A lot of religions believe that the eternal life or paradise or whatever you want to to call it is a reward for you after you die, and you 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 go through the judgment. And if you are a good guy, you go to you. The reward is is the paradise, and if you are a bad guy, you go to hell, to to fire. But in Christianity, we do not believe in that. We believe that when we are, when we believe in Christ, we have already started eternal life now, right now, here and now. And death becomes only a station that we go through, like marriage, like uh, uh, going to the university, like birth, like all those uh, landmarks in our lives. And death is one of them. But but the minute, the second, the, the, the when we believe in Christ, we enter into the culture of God. We enter into the culture of the Trinity. We enter into the new covenant. We enter into what's so-called eternal life. Practically speaking, it means already I defeated death. Already. Because, not because I defeated death, because he defeated death and I am in him. So I can't then resist asking in the light of what you've just said, <clears throat> how does so how does this knowledge, how would this knowledge uh, affect our emotions at the death of a believer? Ah. Jesus wept. He grieved of, of Lazarus. He grieved that because he felt it's not natural to die. God didn't, didn't create humanity to die. He, 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 he felt the, bro the, the breaking of the fellowship, the breaking of communion, the loss. He, he, he felt the pressure of the evilness of death. <clears throat> because of that, he was moved and wept. So when we grieve, we should grieve together. We should um, remind ourselves that being in Christ is holding on to this fellowship, holding on to the memories, holding on to our faith together, our memories together, our love for each other. That never dies. For, because of that, our griefing is different, very different. It's not a sentimental memory of somebody who died. No, it's, it, it is a, a, a realistic, uh, um, 
actual fellowship with that person and that will not die that continues because we are all have we all have the fellowship with him who is the the, the founder of our faith jesus felt it felt the the the, the power of death the power of darkness and because of that, he accepted the cross because he wanted to end it once and for all. I wonder if, um, so taking a slightly different tack, I wonder if we, we tend to um, almost treat as an afterthought those, those pieces of the gospel story that come um, after, uh, after his... his uh, his resurrection from the tomb, um, you know, before his ascension into heaven. So there's quite a period there where yeah, yeah, I can't, he meets with the uh, disciples. Yes. Something like 40 times. And of those 40 times, 12 of them, he actually, he actually eats with them. Um, and, and, you know, and, and in the way we kind of treat the Bible, the gospel stories, all this sort of becomes a bit of an afterthought, and yet it's incredibly important in understanding how he is with us, how he he left the Holy Spirit with uh, with the disciples. And yes, people. it's very important because because in, in in with John there is no Pentecost. For John, in the theology of John, he breathed on them the Holy Spirit, and he said, "Accept the Holy Spirit." He gave them the life. He, uh, uh, he empowered them by the Holy Spirit. So uh, uh, the, the time between the resurrection and the, the ascension is an important time to teach us what it means that Jesus is with us. So, and, uh, so, so that after the ascension, we, we know what it means that he, uh, he is with us in the body, he lived, he taught in our streets, he met our people, and how he was with us after the resurrection. So he gave us patterns, he gave us examples, he gave us references, so that after his ascension, we are not left, as he says, as St. Paul says, orphans. We are not orphans. We have the Holy Spirit with us. The resurrection, the, the, the power of the resurrection is the power of light in the darkness of the world. This, this we have to understand from here, not only here. Sometimes my problem with Christianity in the West, it is all locked here. We need to travel from here to, to the heart. To feel, uh, uh, not mathematically, the resurrection, but existentially, uh, uh, humanly, uh, uh, emotionally, uh, psychologically, physically. How Jesus, how, what does it mean that Jesus is with us? It means the glory of God is still with us. If the, if the glory of God is in the heart of that chapter, it means the glory of God is still with us through the Holy Spirit. The glory of God has never left humanity after Christ. Never. Before Christ, the glory, we, we, we saw glimpses of that glory. Like Moses saw glimpses of the glory. And, and the prophets saw glimpses of the glory. But with Christ... The Holy Glory came to, to, to be a person. The, the incarnation is the presence of God was fully with us, among us. And, that, and the glory never left us because the Holy Spirit is the, also the glory of God. D don't you think that uh, part of that is, um, is our... our instinctive human desire to to control our lives 
you know, we live in a society where we're expected to be in control of our lives, expected to be in control of our jobs, expected to be in control of our families, expected to be in control of our holidays, etc. expected to be in control of our finances. And so what we almost instinctively do is then try and intellectualize Christianity instead of actually it really giving in and, 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 and allowing this immense challenge to enter our hearts. I want to take it even further and say we created the institutional church also to control Christianity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. We want, we want to control everything. This is this is our 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 greatest uh, uh, temptation, and this is our greatest uh, threat to the relationship with God. To say to God, we can do it. We can even control the relationship with you. Here, we have a mass, we have vestments, we have sacraments, everything ruled everything is in order everything is back to 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 before and everything is is controlled like the the uh, uh the airport when you when you go through the the arch either you you peep or you don't peep and this is what is the church the church is the arch you go through are you kosher or you are you not <laughs> Christianity, Jesus came in order to destroy that and say, I am the resurrection and the life, not the church. The church is the body, my body, the, the body of the believers who worship God through me. I am there for you. Uh, and, and, and also we control Christianity by even even more dangerous thing by being good but by doing doing some good work and we think well done and i repeat every time i speak every i repeat christianity is not about being good Christianity is about being in Christ and everything flows from that. Fine. Does it mean we don't make mistakes? Of course we do. Does it mean that we don't fall? Of course we do. Does it mean we don't, we don't uh, um, step over thorns and nails? Of course we do. As St. Paul says, for your sake, we die every day. The whole day. But we know we are in you. We are in Christ. It's not about doing good. It's not about uh, uh, giving an injection for, in my, for my consciousness by, by being good and say, oh, well, today I've been very good. I gave money to the poor. I helped this and I did that. And, and then when, when, when I'm, I'm at home and... Before I sleep, I feel fantastic yes, but, today. But we love we love reassuring ourselves exactly with but, with 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 our with our collection of Christian air miles. <laughs> exactly, but the, the Christianity about is about being in the glory of God, constantly remembering that it's not me. So really, so so. When we, when we accept, when we absolutely accept in our hearts that he is the resurrection, we don't need to fear death. Well, death is scared of you. So you choose. Do you want to be scared from death or do you want to scare death? It's a choice. It's a choice we have. Imagine yourself meeting death. You have only two options. 
Either you are scared or, or, or the death is scared. You choose. If I believe I, the, uh, Jesus is the resurrection and the life, you scare them. If you don't believe that, you will be terrified of death. And death has, has the, the upper hand on your life. As simple as that. It's our choice. Like Martha said, if you were here, my, my, my brother was, wouldn't have died. Or he would rise at the end. This is all what I have. No, 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 wait, Martha. We have a third option. This is our option as, as the community of, of Christ. Our option is to, to choose life, to choose Christ, the resurrection and the life. In this way, we scare death. And it's interesting then coming back also to your earlier point that um, when we talk about the glory of God, we're talking about the presence of God. So consequently, if we talk about doing things in order to glorify God, mm -hmm. we're talking about doing things in order to make God present. Yes. But we do it, we, we say it without meaning it. Yes. We say it for the glory of God. Most of the times we, we, we mean for the sake of God. No, yes. this is not the glory. The glory is when we feel that God is there in everything I say, in everything I do, in everything I think of, in everything I feel. The more... I feel the presence of God, the more I'm in the glory of God. Because of that, we say it's a glorious ascension. It's a glorious resurrection. Why? It's glorious. It doesn't mean wonderful. It means it's the event that God was fully there. Well, I think, Nadim, we have um, inevitably, you've covered an enormous amount of ground and given us an incredible challenge and, uh, and a lot of a lot of a lot of food to think about. And um, on behalf of everybody, I thank you for that and thank you for your um, for your passion and attention to uh, to the detail. Um, it's been a, uh, a special session. So thank you.